if you are in the beginning stages of learning piano, one thing that's probably feeling quite difficult and awkward is anything that involves changing your hand position. So this could be lifting up and changing to a new chord. It could be a melody that has a leap in it, or it could be some kind of broken chord pattern in the left hand that jumps around positions. So in this video, I'm gonna give you one simple concept and how to practice it, which I then want you to implement that into your playing to make playing the piano feel a lot more comfortable and enjoyable. At the moment, perhaps it's looking like this. Your fingers are jerking and then clinging onto the next chord and they're getting mixed up. Or maybe your hand is staying locked and spread out as it only just makes it to the next spot like you're stretching to reach it. If your playing is looking anything like that, it's going to be feeling really tense and rigid, which we don't want, and that's going to lead to lots of mistakes and really slow down your progress. Okay, so the main thing is about how we are lifting up and moving, but we're going to do a couple of warm-up exercises to get used to the idea before we actually try and incorporate it into playing something. That way you can focus just on the technique and not what notes you're aiming for. So the first warm-up exercise is we're going to just Place your hand on the piano so your fingertips are just touching, not playing any keys down. And the point of this is we're trying to get used to feeling how our arm is really holding everything up. So we don't want to be leaning or digging any weight into the keyboard. Make sure to have our nice hand position, slightly curved fingers. And I just want you to run up and down the keyboard like that. And if you can feel your fingers just lightly going over the keys like that, then now you've got that feeling for yourself of your arm being in control of the movement and the height and the placement of your hand without getting stuck digging your weight down into the keys. And when your arm supports its own weight, your wrist is much freer to relax, which is really important. So practice this in the right hand and then the left hand, keeping nice and relaxed, nice relaxed wrist joint, and then you can try it together. You go the same way if you want or outwards and inwards. So that's the first warm up. The next warm up is going to focus more on exactly how we're going to move nicely. And this is basically the main concept, but we're just not going to land on specific notes yet. And it's going to be a bigger, more exaggerated movement for the moment, which helps you get it to begin with. So all we're going to be doing is practicing moving roughly about an octave down and then back and forth. Like I say, it doesn't matter exactly where you land. Now, the key to this concept, the thing we're focusing on is how you're moving. So what you don't want to do first is you don't wanna go side to side like this. I call this planing when sometimes I see students doing this. We're really trying to emphasize and get used to that feeling of lifting and letting the hand relax. So it's helpful to think of making an arch between positions, not a straight line. I know we did that in the first warm up exercise though, that's different. We're gonna lift up and don't overthink how to do it. Just let your upper arm kind of do the work and that leaves this bit of your wrist and this bit of your forearm and your hand to relax and get rid of the tension. When you do get rid of the tension, then your hand is able to remold and to do different things, go into new positions. So you'll know when you've got it right because your wrist isn't like that. It's just like this. It's relaxed. It's not doing anything. It's just sort of hanging out. Make sure that you actually keep an eye on your wrist as you practice lifting up to check that your arm isn't straight and stiff. You want to see and feel a nice flex in your wrist when you move. Um, if your hand was in an expanded position for a chord, then it should come back in like that. So we're going to lift up, relax, move, and then just come down on the new spot. And then you just kind of engage a little bit as you come down. Don't tense it. You don't need to grip or like dig in. You just relax and just catch it there. As you come down, we can have a bit of flex in your wrist to get back. So we're gonna go back and forth like this. Just do that a few times. And then when that's comfortable, we're just gonna just kind of push the notes down as well. So the next thing is to kind of just do that. Doesn't matter what notes you hit, we're just gonna go roughly about an octave down, back and forth like that. So once you've tried that in your right hand and your left hand as well, then you can also try this with some bigger leaps and then also not leaping at all. So just going up and down like this, okay? And then you can try hands together. So you can go in the same direction like this. You can go outwards and inwards like this. And this is good for your hand coordination. Um, and you can go up and down together as well. Or you can do, you can do it like that and practice going at different times. So that's the next thing to practice. 
Now we can introduce trying to find a target as well. So the next thing is to try and target a single note. So let's just pick D and D. And let's use your third finger, although feel free to try this with other fingers as well and pick some other notes to try and land on. So now you've got to try and get that technique right whilst also bearing in mind targets you've got to hit. Let's use finger three on D. So we're gonna play D, up and relax, down, up and relax and move down just like that so now you're starting to get a feel for that yourself we can play through some chord positions where we now have to remold our hand shape on the way to each new position we're going to jump through the inversions of a c major chord it doesn't matter if you don't know what that means yet for this video but you should learn that at some point so there's a video linked in the description which you can watch afterwards i want to get this order in your head we're going to lift up we're gonna relax and then move and remold. And when our hand is relaxed, it makes it much easier for your hand to remold into the new chord position. So if we look at this, we play the C major root position first. And then as you come up, you wanna have that feeling that you had in the warm up exercises when we did this and that of your arm being in control letting your wrist relax and that makes it more moldable. You can get it into another position much easier like that. It's when it stays tense and locked that it feels a lot more difficult and awkward to get to hit a new spot accurately. Okay, so you play the chord and you come up and we're gonna let our arm guide the movement over. Okay, so we're gonna make almost like a mini arch over. We're not gonna plane along the side and we're not gonna try and stretch and reach the new position. We're gonna bring our hand to the position using our arm. So let's go all the way from the bottom to top. Root position, up, relax, move and remold. Down on the first inversion shape, up, relax, move and remold. To the second inversion shape, up, relax, move and remold, back up to root position at the top. And you can repeat that for the way down as well. And we can apply that as well to really close chord position changes. So if I was gonna go from this C up to this F like that, I'm not moving very far, am I? Just slightly that way. So it's basically just up and down. So that there's that little moment in the air when you need to be relaxed so you can change your hand shape. So chord up, relax, remold and move down. Up, relax, remold and move down. Now you can start by lifting up slightly further than you would normally um, and then like I say, it becomes a bit more of a smaller movement, so we don't want to be lifting up too high when we don't need to. So if we go from this F to this B flat, we're not moving left or right on the piano. We are going to have to move slightly forward to get our thumb on that B flat. In fact, hand placement is something else really important that helps tie this all together. My next video is going to be on that, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you know when that's up. I'll put it in the pinned comments um, when it's up as well, in case you're watching this in the future. But for now, we're just gonna move from this F to this B flat. Now, this is more of an up-down motion, but the same principle applies. You play the first chord, you come up and relax, and then you just move to the new position and come down. We don't wanna be like trying to dart across over in this direction. We don't wanna do that. And especially because the, the, the black key is higher, we definitely need to make an arch and come over the top of it like that. And so I'm sort of exaggerating the height of it at the moment. To get it, it will be kind of smaller and more refined with practice. I'll do another example in the left hand. This is more of a broken chord pattern and this is from Feralese. So the left hand plays a broken C and then the next one starts on G down here and then we play this pattern. Now, if I did it wrong and I just went along like this, that would make it much harder to find the next spot accurately. And it means I'm not coming down at it from a good angle to allow me to continue the motion and flow through the next position. So I wanna come down on it in order to move through it nicely. Plus, if my hand is locked and still spread out from the first chord, that makes things much harder too, as it needs to relax in order to kind of remold and move comfortably through the next chord shape. So I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna lift up, relax, and move to the new position. And again to the next position, up, relax, and move. And one more time. And then there's that E bit. 
For this, it's also helpful to use a slight outward gesture when you move by using some arm rotation. Whilst we still want to feel the push of every note that we play, by controlling the weight of our arms properly, we want to make our hands feel lighter and more mobile when they move around. I kind of like to think of it like they're in low gravity sometimes, or if we're playing something like this, almost like our hands and arms are moving around like mist. I know that sounds a bit silly, but it kind of helps me picture the motion. Let me give you a couple of extra tips to finish. So firstly, to try and implement this into your playing, it's gonna take a while, it's gonna take a bit of practice because what you're trying to do is, you're trying to make it automatic and build a habit out of it so that you can do it without thinking. So that every time you need to lift up and move position, it's just kind of automatic that you have this kind of graceful gesture going on with it. But expect it to take a little bit of work and time to get there. You may find that if you just try and play a song and suddenly do it on every manoeuvre, you may get a few of them and other times you'll forget to do it because you're thinking about so many other things. Um, there's lots of other things going on and it may feel a bit awkward at times still. So what you should do for now is try and implement it in a small section, like a really small section, even like one or two position changes and then gradually expand how much of that piece you can do it with. The next tip is that when you're practicing this on an actual piece or an exercise, you may want to do hands separately to start with before doing hands together, because it may be that your hands kind of need to move at different times or they may need to move in different directions. So you're kind of practicing that coordination as one movement. And the third tip is that to really make sure that the material that you're working with, that you're trying to implement this with, that you really know where those notes are and you can see them quickly. Because if you're stuttering over where to go next at any point, it's gonna cause you to tense up. And it's the fact that you're unsure about where you're headed next. So you can't move from A to B nicely if you lift off of A and you're not actually sure where you're gonna go next. So you need to make sure that you practice it slowly and that you're really confident with the notes that you're playing. Remember, we are exaggerating the size of the movement to start with to make it more obvious, but sometimes it will be smaller and more subtle. Sometimes we need to lift right off, but other times only a little. Sometimes our hand can even lift off whilst we release a key, but our fingers keep touching them, or even sometimes we can lift up whilst holding a key down. So I hope that was helpful. It is a common mistake, a thing that beginners have to learn. I've got a video here with loads of other really common mistakes that can really disrupt your practice. You should check out next. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything. It's always good to hear from you and thanks for watching.